Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we're going to be doing another best of one standard event. And I found another deck here on untapped.gg that's been performing pretty well. And we're going to have a look at Gruel Prowess today. So before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing um, or maybe sharing my channel with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. And then there will be a deck list here in the description, both on untapped.gg as well as moxfield.com. And then I also will have a link to all of my other playlists. So if you want to see other videos that I have, check those out as well. Um, I do also want to give a big thank you here to my members. So thank you guys so much for helping to support my channel. Um, if you do want to become a member and help support the channel, you can do so for as little as $1.99 a month to also get early access to my videos. So here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, let's jump into the deck. So Gruel Prowess, um, this has been a deck that I've seen fairly often on ladder and it's you know, definitely very, very aggressive. Um, kind of similar to like the Rakdos version that has kind of the um, blowout with sacrificing creatures to sort of fling them at the opponent. This is just a little bit different where it uses uh, cards like Questing Druid to help kind of get early advantage and then um, take advantage of the fact that all of the other spells in the deck will buff it up. So for creatures, it has uh, Questing Druid, Slickshot, Show Off, Fugitive Codebreaker, and Monastery Swift Spear, and then also Picnic Ruiner as kind of the targets to get pumped with all of their stuff. Some of these versions of this deck just runs just straight pump. Um, this particular version runs four copies of Play With Fire, so a little bit of interaction, that and two copies of Witch Doctor Frenzy. So you do have some stuff to do um, to opposing creatures, but for the most part, it's just going to be about pumping up your own creatures and then protecting them with, um, looks like two copies of Snakeskin Veil to help kind of protect your own threats. We also run four copies of Monstrous Rage, uh, two copies of Audacity, and then four copies of Ancestral Anger to help kind of pump up our own creatures. And then Kumano faces Kakazan, does double duty in both pumping creatures and then also acting as a creature in itself. So pretty straightforward deck. Um, yeah, just stick a threat, get some card advantage through Questing Druid if possible, and just pump into the red zone. For the mana base, we have 20 lands, and then they've got two copies of Thran Portal, um, looks like a single Copper Line Gorge, and two Carplusion Forests, and then a single 10 of each Bosaiju and Sokinzen with... Uh, two basic forests and 11 mountains to kind of round it out. So excited to see how this turns out. Um, I've definitely faced off against this deck quite a few times. And so I'm excited to see what it's like from the other side of the table. So with all that said, let's jump in. Hope everybody has been having just a, uh, awesome week so far. I've really been enjoying kind of diversifying things a little bit and just doing these standard events. So if you guys are appreciating these and um, really want to continue to see more best of one standard events, let me know. They are, you know, definitely quite a bit of fun for me to do. I also do like doing just grinding on ladder and the deck that I'm currently using for that is Mono White Humans, which has been doing really well. So if you want to see more of those videos, also put that in the comments. All right, let's jump into our first game. Uh, 
Okay, opening hand looks great. We've got stuff to do, all of our mana, all the different colors that we need. Looks like we're potentially up against mono white humans. And I guess the question here is, do we want to cycle Ancestral Anger off their veteran? Um, we only have one creature right now, but I guess we can just sort of hold on to it. So I think maybe we just sit. Yeah, I kind of don't have enough of a feel for the deck to know if cycling there was correct. Thalia is definitely <laughs> super rough. Um, now, I guess we can just go Codebreaker here since we, I suppose we could also just play out the Questing Druid. It is a lot worse now with Thalia in play, but um, I guess if we want to try to get the extra card advantage, we could just go for Codebreaker. Not really sure. I, I'm kind of I kind of like sticking the questing druid actually, so I think I'm gonna go for that. Yeah, turn three Adeline with Thalia backup is pretty brutal. Also, we don't have any interaction, which is not great. So this could be a very quick game. Um, let's see, I guess if we Monstrous Rage here, can make this an X3, potentially trade with Adeline. Yeah, I think we, we go for it. And then if they don't block, we can just uh, play Codebreaker. I think we just play Codebreaker. I guess we could play it as a 2-2 two -two that we're able to at least block the 1-1s. One um, it's not going to flip for anything, but is that better than just trying to push for a little bit of damage here? Yeah, probably. But we're definitely in a super rough spot here against Mono White. I think my major issue with the deck is, is it just has so little interaction. So we're looking to take 10 damage here. Oof. Like, do we have to just block Adeline here? I think we might have to. But like, we're so far behind, it's hilarious. Um, this game is basically over at this point. I think we have to chump. Yeah, there's just no way. Like we block here, block here, and we're still taking two, four, six, eight. Yeah, we're, we're super dead. Not off to a great start. Zero and one so far. So yeah, this deck, at least on untapped.gg, does supposedly have a 65% win rate with this exact list. So I guess we'll see. Pretty match dependent though. All right, we got all of our, all of our colors. Got a Picnic Ruiner. Looks like a decent opener. And I think 
here we want to save the play with fire potentially for like a late slick shot show off i guess we could just try to go face if we wanted to maybe get questing dryad or druid down first but i think we just want to play picnic runner next turn so setting up more stuff in the hand seems decent I don't know if I'm supposed to cycle this like throated face right now. I guess since we're we're racing, I'm, I'm gonna try it. Like if they didn't have Kumano faces Kakazan, I might hold it there, just so we can deal with like their slick shot show off. But now it's gonna come in as a two three, so that's kind of not good enough anymore. We might want to now that we have Snakeskin Veil. Oh, this is actually. Yeah, I guess we could go for the seek the beast here i kind of wanted to get questing druid down um picnic runer with snakeskin veil backup feels a lot better though so i think we're just gonna just go for the questing druid play here at their end of turn and then set up for next turn because like right now we still look like a mono red deck so they might think that we're holding up like lightning strike. Okay, so now I think we just hold up Picnic Ruiner. Unfortunately, we lose this Kumano Faces Kakazan. <sighs> kind of got to get this on the field, though, pretty soon. Otherwise, I suppose we could Questing Druid and then Kumano Faces Kakazan make it into a 2-2. Two -two. That just seems pretty anemic. So yeah, I think we just let the Kumano Faces Kakazan go. Obviously, it's like super suspect that we left the green open there <laughs> and didn't play the Kumano faces Kakazan. So it's pretty clear we have Snakeskin Veil here, but I think we've still got to go for it. So yeah, I think we really want to get this to to four this turn. Um, so I don't, we don't really have time for the questing druid. I guess we can go questing druid and then ancestral anger, and then just like hold fugitive code breaker for next turn. Maybe that's okay. Oh man, they had the second lightning strike. Rough. Whew. Triple lightning strike. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. I don't think we can do 10. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately we cannot. <sighs> so I guess if they have nothing and you play double code breaker, we can stabilize at one. Potentially, I mean, we can chump, double block, and then go to one. But yeah, it feels like we're super dead. Oh. 
Yep, that's gonna do it. <laughs> Not doing great so far. 0-2. Whew. See if we can at least like get off the launch pad here. They can't all be bangers. I wonder if this is a deck we have to like aggressively mulligan just to kind of get there. Okay, hand looks good. Let's see if Swift Spear can do what the others could not. I think we just go for the Seek the Beast play here. Like, I don't like opening ourselves up to burn here by playing like Swift Spear plus Audacity. So I think I'm just gonna do that instead. All right, they want to wait for our questing druid. I think we just hold this till their turn because it's pretty clear that they've got uh, play with fire here. So we'll play the game of chicken with him. We missed a point, but like we keep our swift spear, which is pretty good. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice draw. So now we can go Codebreaker plus Monstrous Rage, making sure to tap our mana correctly. I think we want to put it on the Swift Spear because it looks like they've got Play With Fire in hand. This puts our Swift Spear just a little bit out of range. Okay, I don't know why they didn't attack with Feldon. That just doesn't make any sense at all, since it can't block. So now let's get... Um, I guess that we can go for Questing Druid plus Swift Spear plus Witchstalker Frenzy. That feels pretty good. I mean, we could also just throw Audacity in there. I think it's kind of irrelevant at this point, but... All right, so let's tap our mana carefully here. This should be super over. Yeah, it's actually, it's possible Audacity was just game, uh, but it's kind of irrelevant. We're at 15. I think it doesn't actually matter. Yeah. All right. So at least we're on the board. One and two. Looks like this, this deck definitely does have some legs if it gets a nice draw.
It still feels just like really fragile though. Like only having six pieces of removal in the entire deck is just, I don't know, it's, it's uh, maybe it's enough. Okay, any hand with Slick Strat show off feels pretty good. Orzov Bronco. They could definitely have a fair amount of removal here. I wonder if, we, if we're supposed to like plot the show off. I mean, or wait until we've got like snakeskin veil mana. I could see like another Kumano here. Kumano plus play with fire feels okay. Like, just leaving, like, this, the naked slick shot show off is, doesn't feel amazing. We could also just plot it and lose the, the extra damage. <sighs> yeah, I think plotting it... Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm going to go with the play with fire. Plus uh, Kumano play here. Guess we can hold this. Okay, I think we just kill this so we don't they don't get any kind of value here. Fortunately no snakeskin veil mana, but we've got at least ancestral anger, so that feels pretty good. Although I guess maybe we should have let them attack with a Bronco and like, cause they'd gain, they would uh, do damage to themselves, which would've been pretty great. little wary about ancestral anger here because it looks like they are representing some kind of removal so I guess I mean they're probably just going to use it anyways but this way we we miss the card draw so maybe we just god doing it after combat is so bad I think we sort of have to though I think we just push see what they do Yeah, like I really don't like Ancestral Anger too much because it just, it so opens you up to getting blown out. Okay, no removal. I think we just hold. Like we could try to cycle now, but maybe they tap out and we can use it next turn. Okay, yeah, they did have the removal, so I'm glad we didn't do it. Yeah, that's why I just, I don't know, Ancestral Anger just feels like kind of a, not my favorite card. Guess we can also hold the play with fire here. If they try to like activate Mishra's to block, we can just use it on that.
That was a nice pickup, though. Here, I think we hold the play with fire just to play around like another cut down. I guess the, the chance of them having it is pretty low, I suppose. But this way, we do play around cut down. Wandering Emperor, okay. Fortunately, no snakeskin veil. We could Ancestral Anger now to try to card draw. Doesn't feel amazing. Um, we do want to flip the Glutton back though, so I think maybe just killing the Wandering Emperor with Play With Fire seems good. Liliana is pretty gross. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we could use Codebreaker for value. Um, I guess we just attack into Liliana with Ancestral Anger on Kumano. I feel like that's probably the play. The recorder cut out there, but we used Ancestral Anger on Kumano and attacked into Liliana and they did not block. Now we've got some nice refill potential here, so feeling pretty good. All right, so flipping is gonna cost us how much? Cost us one, that's pretty great. Um, let's go for it. I guess cost us two. And that is a fantastic draw. Um, I think we just, yeah, we go Kumano here. We'll trade the Kumano for Trespasser, but we at least we don't lose our code breaker. Definitely drowning us in value here. All right, so I think we, let's seek the beast here first of all. Tapping two red. And then swift spear into rage feels pretty good. Guess we could also like go questing druid plus swift spear. I think we want the access to rage here. Should get it done. All right, two and two. All right, two and two.
Yeah, I mean, we could definitely stage a comeback here. I wonder what this deck's best matches are. Okay, opening hand looks great. Yeah, we've got creatures, a little bit of uh, protection, stuff to do. Convoke. So I think we just go. Um, That's actually an interesting question. I wonder if we go ancestral anger here. Could also just play a druid or use the seek the beast to set up some more card draw. Kind of like card draw. I guess let's attack and see what they do. You know, I thought we had an extra turn <laughs> on those cards. Whoops, that was a mistake. Yeah, for some reason I thought it was like where we had an, an extra full turn to use those cards. So that could certainly cost us here. Okay, now I think we set up Questing Druid number one and then get Ancestral Anger going. Slick Shot's a very nice pickup. All right, let's see if we can keep it going. Three and two. Yeah, that last game was such a mess. I can't believe we pulled it out. <laughs> okay, opening hand looks bad good enough we've got a creature we have a little bit of interaction stuff to do no green mana but i think it's probably good enough most of the opening hands have been pretty good i think maybe like the first round the opening hand like wasn't amazing but i didn't recognize that it wasn't amazing Definitely seems like the kind of deck where we want to hang on to our removal until like later for extra value. Two mana up. I kind of I kind of want to go like Kumano here. I guess if they have March, it doesn't really matter. But like if they're holding up Get Lost, actually it still doesn't matter, I suppose. So yeah, I think I'm going to go Kumano because then we can get like a little bit extra value potentially. Even though it's like slightly more mana inefficient, we can use like play with fire here or something like that. Oh, interesting. It's like a super slow roll Boros deck. OK, 
Hey, Picnic Ruiner, please and thank you. Yeah, I kind of want to push here with Codebreaker, but like Ruiner is so good, I have to like give myself the chance of actually doing it. I think we hold up Play With Fire. Try to set up our draws, maybe. Double War Leader, okay. Yeah, let's see if we can set up our draws, get some green mana going. Um, questing Druid will work. Yeah, I mean, that works. Hopefully we like hit a land off of it. Although I kind of want to just go like Codebreaker plus Anger here. I think that's even better. Man, they've been like super setting up for a couple turns here. And that is like not gonna do it. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess that's it. Yeah, that'll work. That's the weirdest Boros deck, like nothing to do the first three, two or three turns. <clears throat> All right, four and two. Continuing to climb. This could be a true comeback story, hopefully. But yeah, I think for like the most part, if you've got mana, like enough land to support it, try to like hold your burn until you've got creatures that can benefit from like the um, prowess to get extra damage. Yeah, this hand looks actually fantastic. Assuming they don't kill the slick shot show off, it looks amazing. <laughs> That's a big if. And I feel like in the most part, for the most part, you don't run out the slick shot show off just by itself. Probably just like plot this on two. Yeah, I think I'd rather plot that on two than go for Kumano and like lose that on the mana. I guess like, hmm. So they probably have removal, counter spells are a real thing. Yeah, maybe we should just get it down now just so we can play around the counters. I don't know, this is a little bit presumptuous because like there's a very real chance they've got removal for it. But like getting it countered sucks too, so. Uh, I don't know what was right there. They had to cut down. Nothing to do on two, unfortunately. But I don't think like waiting on the Kumanos would have been right either. Like we missed out on some damage and like if we drew that last turn that would have been nice, but it's okay. They probably have like Wandering Emperor here. I wonder if they run like, it, like depends on like if this is the control version or if this is the um, more like mid-rangey version. Because like if they have like board wipe, I probably want to save Codebreaker. I think we probably just actually since we've got Veil, we can go Anger here into Snakeskin Veil if they try to remove in response. Yeah, there's the get lost. 
We'll say no thank you. And still get the card draw. So that feels pretty good, like kind of like time walking them there. So now I think we just go for Swift Spear into Rage. And I think they, they definitely have like at least one piece of removal here, so we wait for the removal. So we'll just pass, see what they do. So if, if they just want to accept six, like that works. Because we could have, I guess we could have gotten them to one. But I think like passing there is probably correct. And here it's like board wipe or lose. Okay, so they had the board wipe. <laughs> Oh well. We knew it was a possibility though. But I mean, if we draw one land, like we're just golden. So then we can just go like Codebreaker into Rage and that should do it. Fortunately, we did not get there. Codebreaker is like the easy damage, but then like we don't have any more haste creatures. So I kind of want to do like Ruiner, even though it's like a little bit more setup. I mean, this way we get them down to three. We don't have like that much burn though, so I think we kind of have to go for the Ruiner play. As much as that sucks. Yeah, land off the top would have been victory. Sure. Oh man, you're killing me, Smalls, with these draws. I think now we gotta go for like the, the land play here. Cause like, I'm fairly sure they've got a two mana removal spell, so Codebreaker doesn't really do much. Could have counters too, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, what a beating. Are we just going to get countered into oblivion? Yeah, like it could happen for sure. Like, I don't think, I, I guess there's no more. <laughs> we don't have any more land in this deck. <laughs> oh, it's like a 50-50 at this point now. Although this connects, it's pretty good, but they probably have like five counters in their hand. Yeah, I think Frenzy's not really doing us much right there. Yeah, now our hand is like super dead. I guess that is kind of part of the problem with this deck is that like if they can just kill your creatures, like you're so done. Like you kind of can't miss. And like this deck has a fair amount of creatures, like with Kumano faces Kakazan. I think it has like maybe 24-ish creatures. So you have a decent number. I 
We could have held that land, but I think we want to try to play around No More Lies. So they're going to go for like end step memory deluge here. I guess if they Liliana us again, we just go, we just toss at Audacity because it's pretty bad. <laughs> okay, now we get all the land in the world. Um, I mean, at this point, maybe we hold land. Yeah, I guess I could see holding land here. They have like probably 10 or 15 removal spells going. All right, so now I guess let's try. Okay, well that was <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, I don't think we want to play this until we have three mana up, just because of uh, no more lies. So we just super slow roll this. We lose audacity here. And unfortunately, because they've got Reef, we can't push. <sighs> Probably holding at least one No More Lies. <sighs> Guess we could try a Monstrous Rage here on Swift Spear, like pre-combat. Because if they block with Reef, assuming they don't have... I mean, I'm sure they have removal here, but if they don't... We can push through a little bit of damage. The problem is, like, Liliana is just going to be such a problem. Yeah, I don't know what the right play is here. I think I might just sit. I think we sit. Now we're probably just super dead. Because they've had like a billion turns to draw cards. Let 
Hmm. I don't know, we don't have enough burn to burn them out. But I guess we get rid of try to get rid of Emperor here, I think. I guess we can do it on their turn, so we don't have to do it now. Do it on like their upkeep. I wasn't sure if getting rid of Emperor or Liliana was better. I think we get rid of Anger here because there's no way that's ever landing. Although I suppose we could we could cast it on their Samurai, oh well. Yeah, I just realized we could probably do that. And then if they want to use removal, then that's fine. Um... Now I think we're just like super dead. Because if they have any removal, they've just got us. We need like slick shot show off off the top with them having no removal. Guess we can like buy a card here. Let's see. Or buy potentially a turn. They can push for eight this turn, so we've got one more turn. Play with fire, do we need that to go face? Or like take out a samurai and slow them down a little bit? Guess we use it on one of the two twos. They might have another emperor and then just like use this time to pump it. But we're just trying to like buy a little bit of time here, I guess. Yeah, like if they refuse to get in with their 4-4, then we have a couple turns. And like weirdly, they won't cast Deluge end of turn. I guess they want to be able to hold up counter magic. Yeah, basically them having the the board wipe on five is really what did it. We had like a one turn window where we, if we drew a land, we could have killed them, but we didn't. Okay, so it's got to be a top deck here for us to pull this one out. And they probably have counter magic and all kinds of stuff up the wazoo. That is not going to do it. Yeah.
Yeah, so I mean, this deck is, it was fun. Um, I definitely had some sloppy play there, so I think you probably could have done better. A little bit of, bit more tight play and just being used to the deck. I ended up going four and three. So we did still, you know, get at least a pack, couple couple gems. Um, looking at the deck here, for it's kind of like the post wrap, um, I will say that I think it definitely has potential. It's pretty powerful. However, only having six pieces of interaction is kind of what I found hard. Um, the other thing is, I'm not sure why they're not running more copies of Picnic Ruiner. And maybe it's, I don't know, I guess sort of, it doesn't have haste, which I get, but they have, let's see, what's the creature count? You have 18 creatures. So I guess you have 22 with Kumano. <sighs> just feels a little bit light. I think that was the major problem. We were just like sitting there like games where we had like a handful of pump and no creatures. And I feel like they could be a little bit more aggressive on like the, the man lands. They could have like probably run like at least two or three copies of Sokens in um, and or beside you be a little bit more aggressive there. So I think this deck could be improved. Um, also, I don't know if you you probably want like maybe three copies of Snakeskin Veil. I might like up this a little bit. Like I see, I can understand like why they're doing it the way they are, but I don't really know how to fix this deck completely. But I think, you know, overall I liked it. I think it was maybe not, I don't like it as much as like Mono White Humans or like Naya Humans, but so craft this kind of uh, with knowing all that if you choose to. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and we will see you in the next one.